this is uh, Red Bull. I'm going to bring you a video on how to import uh, WoW models from WoW Model Viewer into Cinema 4D. Uh, in WoW Model Viewer, uh, you can uh, import or create characters either from the character selection. They have all the races here Blood Elf, Broken, Draenei, Dwarf and so forth. Uh, they have both female and male. Uh, they even have the old uh, versions and they have the new versions, the high def ones. As you can see the high devs have uh, better texture qualities to them, uh, better lines, a little higher bit rate on the models themselves. Another way to bring in uh, models is to go to the view, go to view NPCs. This is if you're looking for a particular NPC. Uh, go here you either can type in the name of the uh, NPC you know, like Jana Proudmore, bring up her newest uh, model. Uh, let's see, she's there with all the gear she has. The only thing that's missing is the staff. There's another one of the brawl. You got Super Thrall. There's his super form. Here's the most updated model of Thrall. And his super shaman form. can see the textures are really nice. They're all up to date for what's in Warlords of Draenor. But let's say if you can't find it here, you can't find the NPC right here, there's another way. You go to import from Euro. So what you need to do is go to the website um, wowhead.com. I'll put a link in the description below you'll be able to type in on this website the NPC's name. For this tutorial I picked uh, Coral uh, Herald of the uh, Twilight. Here's her model right here and well, well heads viewer. You can see this is what she looks like with her gear and everything. So what we're going to do is go right here copy the link from the address bar go back to wild model viewer go to import euro paste the address right there hit import and as you see it brings up the name hit display give it a second and it will import the model with all the gear right here you can see the, the gear Right here in the gear. She looks exactly like she does on the web page. And from here you can do all the animations like you do with all the other models. Now say you want to import your character but can't remember all your gear instead of looking it up and going and finding it and searching for it or going and trying to recreate it from scratch. There's a shortcut. Uh, unfortunately right now, uh, WoW's page is not working, but you can go to your character if it was working. Go, you can type in the character. If you don't want to use your character, you want to use somebody else's character that you know, you type in their name here. Hit search. Bring up the characters. 
if the character looks like this, the portrait, that means they haven't played it in a while and it's not been updated on the website and you'll get this error. You will not be able to copy and paste it. You need to go back and find a different character. So here's my particular character, Ritalin on Lane. Has all the guild uh, gear. Now for here, it will not find the gear, the flame blade, or goblet of quickness. What it'll do is actually look for the transmog, the salt, the scorch gauntlets. So you copy and paste the from the address bar here, uh, and go to Wild Model Viewer. Wild Model Viewer, click on character, uh, go down to import char armory char character, paste it into the um, search engine right there. Uh, unfortunately, while website has updated and for whatever reason model viewer isn't recognized if you click on it right now it would uh, actually uh, cause uh, wild model viewer to crash like so so we're going to go to character now if you want to look for a particular gear all you have to do is go to character go down to load item set this brings up all the sets and the game uh, all the complete sets like um, my favorite one is the Dreadnought set, one of my favorite sets. Here we go, this is Dreadnought. This is a tier three from uh, Vanilla. I actually have the red color version. I could not find it in here, but as you can see, it brings it completely up, all everything on there. Now if you want to add a weapon, all you have to do is go to whichever hand it's in or you want to put in. Like here, we're going to go and search for one-handed sword. You can put a staff in his hand. I'm going to, in his left hand, I'm going to put a shield. You can use whatever, it could be any weapon, but I'm going to use the, my favorite shield in game. No, not that one. Yep, the Royal Crest of Lordaeron. Favorite shield. I use it all the time for transmogs. My, one of my favorite shields. Just a beautiful shield. Now the animation will do exactly what it normally does. It doesn't matter what the weapon is, though sometimes the uh, action might look a little weird. So let's pick a uh, slam. As you can see, he slams with the staff, but he's still holding the shield. So we're just going to go back and replace the staff and put something that looks a little better. Go with a one-headed sword. I like swords, always been my favorite. Now uh, let's pause the animation. Move this over so you can see the sword a little better. Uh, and this is a bad looking one. Um, and just pick whatever one you like the best. Doesn't matter which one. If you're looking for something that looks newer or high def, or you just, even if he's not in this really good armor, you just want him to look like somebody new, just pick a. So first what we're going to do, we're actually going to export as a OBJ. Now, now you have two different types of files you can export as. You can export as a OBJ or FBX. OBJ is a pretty model. Uh, it looks really good and is its best and will export with weapons and full armor. But there are no bones or animation. 
FBXs are are not as pretty as the OBJs, but they come with all the bones and animations. However, the armor and weapons are not exported. And when I mean armor, I mean the shoulder pads, the helm, uh, weapon or shield is not exported. It will export with a cape and the body armor, gloves, boots, chest piece, legs, and belts. Um, but it will not export with the helm, shoulders, and weapon, like I said. Um, but to add the helm and shields and all the pieces that don't come with the FBX is pretty easy, and I'll show you that. So first we're going to export the OBJ. Um, give it a name. I'm going to name this Dreadnought Human. Hit save. And you'll see this export. Uh, next we're going to export the FBX. But when you export the FBX, you want to make sure that you take the helm off first and just export it with um, the helm off because if you don't, the hair will be goofy and if you're trying to do something where a character is removing their helm or you decide, hey, I don't want the helm, the hair will be clipped off. It automatically does it now in Wild Model Viewer instead of like the old days where you would have clipping with the hair. So I recommend uh, taking the helm off and exporting it without a helm for the FBA, FBX uh, file. Right here, you're going to pick a name. Just name it something you're going to recognize. So I'm going to rename it Dreadnought Human. Right here, you're going to have a list of all the animations that the FBX will export with. Um, I recommend ex uh, unselecting everything because if you select them all, it's going to export with all this animation and it can take a lot longer and depending on your computer system it might take a while to do that. So always pick maybe one to two at the most. Attack. Let's go with attack one hand. And right here, we're going to pick attack one hand, hit OK. And there you see, we exported successfully done. Now, before going into Cinema 4D, if you want to save the character, you can go to Character. Just in case something happens, you want to save your character, you can go to Character, hit Save Character. And from here, you can go down and just find the place where you're going to save your models. Name it something that you'll recognize. And there you go. The file will be a .chr. So all you have to do is go to file, open, and uh, open that file, and you'll be able to uh, reopen this character without having to look for it. All right, now we're in Cinema 40. So what we're going to do is um, bring in our character. You either can go to the file, open, find where you saved your character. Right here, here's my OBJ, or you can go over to the object panel, go to merge object, go find your file, 
click on the object. We're going to start with the OBJ first. Click OK. Don't worry about any of those settings. You, you don't need to worry about those. And here is our model. And this is how it exports. There are no bones. There is no animation. Uh, the texture doesn't come up. Over here is each of the objects. Everything's for the most part separated. Uh, you can see names over here. Uh, sword one, this part is sword. You can see it highlighted. Uh, this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to use Cinema 4D, just how to use after uh, how to import these models. So if you need more knowledge on how to actually use Cinema 4D, I'll link I'll put a link to a good website down below. So to get the materials so you can start adding them, uh, just go to where you saved your actual OBJ file. I saved here, go to um, here we go, test, and here are where the textures are saved at. Now, usually you can figure out what texture you use based on what the model is. So right here it says the shield. So I'm gonna start with the shield. We're gonna click on it, double click, hit yes. Right here you can see it added the texture in the right spot. Close that. Now we need to add it to here. So what I'm gonna do instead of going back through there, I'm gonna Alt, click, drag into the next one. Now this automatically creates the uh, material for it so you don't have a bunch of models. So we're gonna to go to the next one. This one's for the sword. So we're going to double click on the material. I'm going to uncheck Speckler. Don't need to worry about that right now. Go into our file, find the material, the image for the sword. There we go. Hit yes. Close it. Now go to the next part. Same thing. Alt, drag, drop. There we go. We've got the next part for the sword. As you can see the texture is pretty good. It looks really nice. Everything looks really good. Oh, the sword, the shield looks really good. You can see all the textures on it, the brain, the bevel, everything fits just right. A few moments later. Alright, so I finished up adding the rest of the texture. It's just the same thing going in, finding where they're at. Uh, if you go to interact, you can actually see how it's going to show up when you render out, but this is all based on your settings. I recommend adding lights and stuff. Oh. Well, it looks really good. I like it. It just needs some light. All right, now we're going to um, open our FBX. Now you can't just open the FBX. What you have to do is go to Merge. So either from the file or from the object file folder or window, go to Merge Object. Go back into your folder where you saved your FBX. Uh, double click on it. Don't worry about all of these. Just keep them as is. Right here is the animation. So whatever animation you want to use for that time, if you export them all, just pick the one you want to use for the moment. So I'm going to just use uh, attack. Don't worry about these. Check these. Just leave them. Uh, these are a little more advanced so you can pick what time they're actually going to start. The animation is actually going to start. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Right here we have our model. Now as you notice, it doesn't have the sword, shield, or helm, or uh, shoulders. 
I want to rename my character just so we can differentiate between everything. So I want to name it Dreadnought Human. I'll rename here. And this is animation. These are the actual bones right here. This is the bones. This is the object. This is all the textures right here. You can see the little icon. It's the skin, the textures right here. This is what makes it look pretty. And these are all the bones. This is actually And make sure you move these both at the same time. If you don't, you'll get what just happened. Uh, one will move and the other one will stay in place. So if you need to move it, what you need to do is uh, select both. So just shift, click, and there you go. Now you can move your object and it'll move both these, the skin and bones. Just rotate it around so we can get a better look at it. There we go. Now we can see it. There you go. You can see now the at, the textures look a little funny. It's just in the materials. Go to the materials. Turn off the speckler and speckler color. You don't really need that. That'd be more advanced stuff. So just turn them off. All you need to worry about is the color. Let's do the same thing for the other material. Turn it off. Don't really need environment. And there you go. It's not a bad model. It looks pretty good. It's not as detailed as the OBJ as far as how good it looks, but it's not too bad. You can see a little bit of line right here from the uh, FBX, but it's not that bad. So now what we need to do is um, get the helm, shield, and sword to attach to this character, to the FBX model. Now what we do is find our shield from our OBJ file. Now when you're working with the OBJ, just be careful with uh, what you pick. Some of them say their hairstyle and stuff, but it's actually uh, something else. So we're going to rename them so we know what they are. We're going to name this one Shield. We're going to name this one Shield Body. It's main body. And what we're going to do is select both of them, go over to Objects, go down to uh, connect objects and delete and they'll make one file and that will just give us one object to move. Now you can see the um, right here when you move it it's moving the anchor point is extremely low. See the anchor point is right there we need to put it right about there so how we do that we go over to our objects anchor point uh, turn it on so we can actually move it and just move the anchor point over somewhere in the middle and just adjust it so that it's somewhat in the middle because that's about where he's going to hold it. So just play around and also depend on what you want to do with the actual shield. If you want him to hold it like a uh, regular shield then you want to put it somewhere in the middle just adjust it to where you want it All right. as here you can see the animation uh, while model viewers animation have been kind of off most with the FBX through go all kinds of crazy but uh, you can fix that later by messing with the joints 
I'm not going to go over that in this tutorial. Uh, I'll do that in a future tutorial of how to do actual animation. But this is just like attaching the OBJ, the armor pieces to it. So we're going to try to attach this. We just need to figure out where to put it on the arm. Anybody be asking, oh, how can I do that? How can I put it to the arm and uh, attach it so that it follows the animation? Well, we're going to go over that. So in the bones right here, where all the animation is held, and you can see right here, this little icon represents bones, and that one represents the actual textures. What we're going to do is go into the bones. Here we need to find the bones for that arm. There's a lot of bones. A lot we don't use, a lot we do use. So what I normally do is uh, just look for the ones for the area that I'm going to be working with at first. So we click on them and we try to figure out where the bones for the arm is going to be. So what I do is just move them. And this one, since it's the whole body, I'm going to rename it body. This one, click on, we're going to see what it uh, ooh, it's the lower part. So we're going to call this waist, uh, no, uh, we're going to name this one hip, hips, the hips don't lie. And this, uh, the hips will control all the lower body, all the rest of these are part of the lower body. So right here, we're going to click on this one, up, oh, and there's our upper body. So we'll call this one waist. This one controls all the upper. This will have all the bones for the upper part of the body. So we just look and see which one that is until we find the one we're actually going to be looking for. This one's more the spine. This one up. This one looks like it controls the left shoulder. Now we got to find the part in the arm we want to attach right here to right about the four. So we're going to go in here. This is the collarbone right here. So I'm going to rename this left collarbone. This will be the shoulder. This one's the elbow. Now we're going to look for something kind of in between. See if we can find the forearm. Let's rename this one uh, left shoulder. Here's the elbow. See, it moves the elbow. Rename it left elbow. Here's the wrist. But we don't want to attach it to the wrist. This one is it's the forearm, but it's not a bone. It actually controls the, I want to say like a muscle. The muscles in the forearms. If you can see here, it's moving the actual glove itself or the bracers on the shoulder part that it's moving, but that's what we're going to attach to. So right here, we're going to rename this just to make it easy to find. We're going to call this one left forearm. Then what we're going to do, we're going to find our shield. So shield, there's our shield. We're going to uh, click, drag, bring it up, 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 up going to find our forearm right here for him, and then we're just going to drag it and drop it onto the left forearm and what you see and make it a child or subsection of that forearm so when the animation starts up and it follows the movement of the forearm that is great except of course the animation is a little crazy and it's offset off the forearm right now but that's easy fix what we'll do is just move the shield, go back to our selection, move it close, 
and just adjust it so that it sits right next to the forearm. We don't want it sitting away from it unless you want to do like a magical shield and a whatever you want to do. It can be a magic shield. This is your canvas. You can put little trees if you want. Oh, magical trees. There we go. And it's falling really close. And it'll fall exactly where that particular bone goes. Of course, animation's still really goofy. Just adjust a little bit more. You gotta be careful when you're putting stuff close because sometimes you'll get clipping like in WoW. Sometimes you'll see the sword do something crazy and it'll do the same thing here because this is pretty much what Blizzard does too. So just be careful where you place it. And it also depends on what your animation is going to be, where you're going to set it. If you want to get really detailed, really want it to fit really close, that'll be up to you. You can make it go a long way, you can have it go whatever way you want, you'll follow the animation exactly. looks pretty good. Next we're going to move the shoulder, the helm over and put it on top of the head. Move the helm and put it on top of the head. Uh, first what we'll do, and we'll just sit it right here on the collarbone. Uh, I think the collarbone is the best place to put it um, and I'll show you why. I'll go ahead and um, finish this up and be back with a finished product. One hour later. All right, now we're back. I put the helm, the shoulder pads onto the character. As you can see, they're all fit right here. Put the left one on the left collarbone. I believe the left collarbone is the best place to put it uh, just because of how the animation works. So um, as you can see, there's a little bit of clipping right here, but you can just adjust that like I was showing you before. Just go to the shield and make adjustments. So you don't get that clipping. You still might get clipping during the animation, but that'll be up to you to fix. There you go. The sh shoulder and the shield and the helm moves with the character, moves with the animation. Didn't have to animate them. Don't have to do nothing with them. Uh, I did the same thing on the right one. Uh, I gave it a name, I just called it right shoulder pad. Just place it right there on the right shoulder. Just adjust it so that it fits pretty good. We're getting a lot of clipping on the right because of how badly the arms are uh, animating. That's fine. All right, so the sword is a little different. Um, what you do not want to do is um, uh, when you're putting it on the character, I had the computer crash, so I had to start over a couple of times. But uh, I'm going to show you what I did with the sword. The sword, when you're putting the um, anchor point on it, you don't want to put it in the middle like you did with the sword. What you want to do is kind of put it in the middle of the helm so that when it moves, it moves at the middle. So I also placed it at the wrist. Just dragged and dropped it right onto the wrist. And you just have to go through the bones and find these. I, I had to look for them. None of these are names, so you just have to go through them and look until you find them. Usually, once you find one part, you just can fall it down and you usually find it. And just play around with it. And the sword, you see, it completely falls the hand. Bam. Fall a hand, of course, the hand's doing crazy stuff because of the animation's all screwed up. Uh, this will work for any weapon, just make sure you put the anchor point in the right spot. It'll do the exact same thing.
Uh, here we go, we have fingers as you can see here. So another thing you want to do when you're uh, placing a weapon in a hand is actually close the fingers. So I'm just going to quickly go in and um, fix the fingers just so they're closed around the hilt right quick. Uh, normally what I would do is actually rename these, uh, give them the names. Um, this would be the ring finger. Just close it around the hilt. Uh, let's speed through this. There we go. Two in the thumb. Pinky. And there you go. Because the fingers weren't originally animated, you don't have to worry about going in and animating the fingers. All you have to do is um, make them close and they'll stay around the hand. Uh, one thing I want to go back over and show you right quick is um, the feet. Um, Uh, while model viewer has had a problem that when you're exporting the feet they look weird and we'll go over to model viewer so I can show you right here you can see the feet have those um, when you add the boots to the feet just pick some random shoe you have the character and you can see the feet they look like the CrossFit shoes that um, you see in the gyms people wearing. And it looks just weird. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. What we're going to do is go to... We're going to go to Model Control. Just scroll down to you see 20 right here. 20. So we're going to click on that. You see the green highlighted. We're going to uncheck that and go down to 29 and click that, highlight that, double click on it. And as you can see, that fixes the problem. So when we export this, let's export it as a OBJ right quick. And when we bring it back into uh, Cinema 4D, you can see that it has doesn't have that crossfit toes anymore let's turn off the speckler right quick so you can see a little better uh, that's all right I'll leave that as you can see the feet are normal they don't have that weird toe look like we did before that's just one way to fix that um, so you don't have to worry about it look like toes i should have done that on the original ones but uh, they look like they're wearing the crossfit toes um, that's it for my tutorial. If you have any questions or you want to uh, uh, know some more about Cinema 4D, leave a comment below. Sub if you want to see more of my videos. Like if you like the video. Uh, or unlike if you didn't like it. I don't care. Um, thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day.